continue with the French energy supply using Tidal is because it is value for money. The cost of putting um, uh, tidal facilities in, for example, around St. Aubyn's Bay is there's two downsides to it currently. The technology isn't yet there to be able to deliver it uh, in an effective way. And secondly, it's massively expensive. And so in all of all that we're doing to go uh, net zero, we've got to balance up the benefit from carbon footprint so we already have a positive carbon footprint from our electricity and also the cost to islanders because you could spend 500 million pounds that would um, dramatically increase the cost of uh, electricity uh, and we know that if we are to persuade people to reduce their own individual carbon footprint and reduce the island's carbon footprint they've got to see that there's a cost benefit to them uh, as well. So there are no firm plans currently, but it is an area that's being uh, reviewed and we would expect uh, as we go through that carbon, uh, the roadmap, uh, that proposals will come forward. But it, we're not we're quite a long way off that yet. Thank you. Our next question comes from Ruth in year three. Are there plans for wind turb turbines in Jersey? Um, thank you, Ruth. It's uh, it, it's a little bit, uh, as I've just said, in regard to uh, tidal. There are two wind turbines already in Jersey, but they are micro turbines in individuals' own uh, homes. Uh, I can't envisage a day when we in Jersey have on island turbines of any uh, even semi industrial scale because we just don't have the land to be able to do that. But the, our French neighbours uh, are putting wind farms up in the uh, sea in their territorial waters. And there's a wind farm in Sambria which goes right up to Jersey's territorial waters. Uh, and uh, one of the plans that we've had and the areas that we'll explore is that once that is uh, up and running and complete, there is the possibility, and we um, submitted this possibility to the French public inquiry, that we could extend that into our uh, territorial waters and use wind in that regard. So again, that's part of the uh, roadmap but it's very much in the medium term and not in the immediate. And the reason that we don't need to think about these technologies in the immediate is exactly, as I said, because the energy that we already buy from France has got a very low carbon footprint anyway. Of course, we know that the problem with the energy that we buy from France is that you're not just thinking about carbon footprint with energy, you also have to think about that thing called energy security which means uh, can you basically rely on that supply and is it within your control and what we are seeing uh, in the current fishing crisis is that there are um, some political commentary shall we say uh, that is indicating that that energy uh, might be challengeable from a security perspective. Thank you very much. Our next question comes from Thomas. How many trees have been planted in Jersey in the last five years and how many does the Jersey government plan on planting before 2030? Uh, Thomas, that's a great question and I don't know the answer to it and you'll be uh, perhaps surprised to know uh, that as far as I'm aware, nobody in government knows the answer to how many trees have been planted uh, over the last five years. Um, what uh, is happening though is that the Environment Department is uh, developing a tree planting uh, program uh, that will allow us to actually monitor and know how many trees are being uh, planted. Again, it's really got to be led by private individuals uh, because the government doesn't own great swathes of land on which it could uh, plant trees, but we all know the great uh, benefit uh, to reducing our carbon footprint by planting trees, trees and the positive effect that they have uh, on the environment. 
um, from that the carbon perspective, but also from the biodiversity perspective as well. Do you have a question? Yeah. Is the state of Jersey government going to start supporting farmers so that we can eat more local food? Um, the government already supports uh, farmers with something called the Rural Initiative uh, Scheme. Uh, and uh, that uh, encourages uh, farmers to uh, produce uh, and think about how they are producing their food. Uh, farmers in Jersey, I think, have got a really good track record of using uh, things like uh, leaf frameworks, which is really a framework to uh, encourage farmers to do things uh, well. And then you've got other things called red tractor frameworks, which is really assurance that you can be sure that if you're buying a product from Jersey and it's got leaf accreditation or red tractor accreditation, uh, then you can be uh, sure that it's been uh, good to animals and it's been good to uh, the environment. The question about food miles, which I think really is what you're uh, asking around whether um, uh, we should be encouraging greater uh, on-island production of food, is, is, is at the heart of how every community needs to think about net zero. So if we think about our grandparents, um, or great-grandparents, uh, they had less choice on the food that they were going to eat. It was much more locally produced. Uh, there wasn't the great carbon footprint. And the reality is that all of us have to think about what we buy, um, uh, what we consume, or what we eat, and where we get it from if we're going to make a success of going um, carbon neutral. So it's a really important part of the equation. Thank you. Uh, what do we try in year six? How many government buildings are there on the island and how many of them have solar panels? Why don't all the government buildings have solar panels to increase our use of renewable energy? Um, there, there are a lot of government buildings. Um, people like me would think there are far too many government buildings and we would be better off selling a few of them and building uh, houses so that we could deal with the housing crisis and make them more affordable for people. But that's not what you want to talk to me about uh, today. So there's around 800 government properties. Not all of them are owned by the government. Property holdings look after, I'm just checking the numbers here in front of me, 300 uh, of those buildings. And the, the sad fact is, out of those 300, there is only currently five that have got solar panels, and four of those um, are schools. So the education department uh, and schools, maybe that's driven by uh, people like yourselves encouraging uh, the use of uh, solar technology. Uh, and then the Silver Jubilee Centre at Crabbe as well has got uh, solar technology. So the planning um, department are and have thought about how they can uh, encourage not only government but also islanders uh, to make it easier when they want to use solar technology on their own individual properties. Because we know that we get enough sun in Jersey to uh, allow that to happen. Of course, we also know that there has been a supply problem with solar panels as well. Uh, and again, it comes into that question of security, where you're going to uh, source them uh, from. But we've got to do a lot, lot better uh, because you, we're either the answer to our on island or, or island use of energy um, uh, is uh, electricity. And we've uh, talked about that. Uh, and the use of solar as well in the very short term, so we can do a lot better there. It is agreed that we will need to switch to electric vehicles in order to combat climate change. Are Jersey governments planning to subsidise electric cars to speed up this transition? Um, you will have heard that uh, in the government plan, which the uh, states are going to be asked to agree on in um, 
in December. <laughs> in December, I think it is. There's twenty three pounds allocated or going to be allocated into a climate emergency sorry million pounds i'm not sure what figure i said uh maybe i said 23 pounds here <laughs> here i've been listening to people talking about billions and trillions for the last two days but we're talking about millions here so 23 million pounds being put into uh, a climate emergency fund we're going to have to think carefully about how we use that money and one of the challenges for us in in Jersey is always uh, that we use that money well because it could be argued and it was argued I think perhaps unfairly uh, that when the previous um, transport minister subsidized electric bikes that islanders who could afford their own electric bikes went and used the subsidy um, as well and these are the same issues that one needs to think about when subsidizing uh, cars so uh, I believe that actually um, the island is ideally suited to electric vehicles. We've got some issues with buses, which should be solvable, but somehow seem to be uh, difficult to solve. Uh, and we've been discussing that over the last uh, day or so. Um, but together with uh, electrifying our vehicles, that doesn't mean everybody has to have an electric car, by the way. Uh, uh, I don't think we should be that authoritarian. We should encourage people to buy electric cars. The price point of electric cars are um, are reducing, so they, that's making them more accessible. But we also have this problem um, with transport congestion. So we need to encourage islanders not just to think about electric transport, but also to think about different modes of transport. When can we walk? when can we cycle when can we use public transport so it's having a joined up approach um and if we're ourselves the approaches is not something that government's always good at um car sharing things like that but we do need to encourage we could use some of that 23 million pounds to subsidize electric vehicles but as the price is already falling i'm not sure it would be the best use of that money Um, I'm, I'm just wondering if you can hear me okay it's cutting out slightly at, at my side but obviously I uh, I did just catch that uh, question so we have in the Am, am I, can you hear me or am I cutting out? Absolutely fine. We can hear you. Okay, fine. great, great. Um, so we've committed the states to go um, net zero by 2030. Uh, if you look at the Paris Agreement, uh, which was signed off uh, at an, an equivalent one of the meetings that I'm at uh, now, uh, that is proposing that countries go net zero by 2050 and by 2030 we'll have uh, reduced our uh, carbon emissions to 68% of what they were in 1990. So it's a little bit of a technical formula. Uh, even achieving that 68% by, uh, by 2030 uh, is going to be uh, a challenge and we're going to have to uh, follow some of the harder uh, proposals in that carbon neutral uh, roadmap. What we could do, of course, is between 2030 and 2050 uh, is use offsets, but that would be really rather expensive. That would be an additional, I think, 12 million pounds every year between 2030 and 2050. There is really a, a feeling here in Glasgow that we are at a, uh, a crossroads and that for the first time you've got an alignment not just between big countries uh, and their leaders coming and saying lofty, uh, giving lofty speeches with high notions, but you've also got um, civil society, you've also got the private sector who for the first time are starting to allocate their own resources and put money into supporting countries to go uh, net zero. And yesterday, 
Um, there was a commitment for £130 trillion pounds a year to be put into uh, helping countries around the world to go uh, net zero. And that is, um, we, we on Ireland have to play our own part, and we as individuals, this is not about government, this is about each one of us thinking about, as I've said already, what we consume, what we eat, where we go, how we make our journeys, all of those things. Um, but at the same time, Jersey is a finance center. And if we can use that um, financial services value around the world in a green way, then that is how we can really impact uh, this, this change that's going on. Uh, thank, thank you for that question. I was hoping that I might have avoided a fishing uh, question, but no, it seems to get everywhere. Um, I think the first thing I'd say is that, um, relatively speaking, of course, Jersey isn't really a large fishing community. Uh, there's just nicely over 100 Jersey uh, fishing uh, vessels, uh, and they are largely small vessels which have the least environmental impact. If we could recreate uh, a fish, fishing communities like Jersey's uh, around the globe uh, and remove trawlers and all of those things which are environmentally damaging, that would go a long way actually to uh, supporting uh, net zero. So I think we uh, shouldn't be too critical of our uh, own fishing industry. They do what they can do uh, to be clean. Uh, and it's not really um, our fishing industry that would be responsible for polluting oceans. Have said that, um, there is uh, work that goes on in um, supporting uh, the Jersey fishing industry about um, uh, how to refuel, what to do in the event of an incident, um, where they should empty their dirty water. Uh, and that all goes on with the ports and the case guards. So they are doing well. Have you seen the nature? The free, I, think, I think a free school bus service would ensure that there are less cars on the road, particularly at peak time. Why did the state's assembly not support this single measure? And I think it should have had an immediate impact on the environment. Uh, well, I suppose if I'm uh, honest, I didn't support the free school buses because it, it came back down to the fact of um, I uh, am a parent. Why should I be? Uh, why should the travel of my children to school be subsidised when I can afford to uh, pay it? Uh, and there are lots of uh, families in Jersey that can afford uh, to pay for transport into school. Uh, so. The question is, would it actually have been a good use of the resources to provide free school buses for every uh, child uh, on the island? And I don't think it would have been. It's far better uh, to seek to use some of that money to clean up and provide a cleaner form of transport uh, to and from school, be that uh, buses and a cleaner form of um, public transport uh, as well. Uh, and we also know, don't we, that um, in theory, uh, if more children went on the buses, that would take um, cars off the road. In practice, of course, as I understand it, uh, school buses are already chock-a-block uh, full. You will be able to tell me that more than uh, I can. And so we would be having to put more, uh, well, uh, I hesitate to use this word, but dirty uh, buses on the road. Uh, if we were to get, um, uh, if we were to see pe more people coming out of their cars. So it's not quite as straightforward as it appeared, is basically what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Emily. Good afternoon, How are you planning on um, There is. Uh, a lot of uh, recycling work that uh, goes on. So when we put our rubbish in the bin in Jersey, it's taken down to 
the energy from waste centre uh, at the Collet. Uh, we don't have uh, a landfill in Jersey, and it's those landfill sites that we see elsewhere in the world that really are uh, the cause of environmental uh, degradation uh, and uh, where rubbish and contaminants enter into waterways and when they're piled up and that sort of thing, so we don't have that. Um, the rubbish that does enter the marine environment in Jersey tends to be uh, litter, uh, and we've all noticed uh, that even during COVID, uh, the masks that we've had to uh, wear, and they, or the PPEs as it's called, but basically, really for most of us, that's masks. Um, we haven't all been as careful as we should have been in the disposal um, of those masks, and it's those sorts of things that actually enter uh, into the ocean from uh, Jersey. Um, the government does run anti-littering campaigns, and it does work with companies like Jersey uh, Royal Potato Company, uh, to make sure that their workers, etc., have access to bins and they remove their uh, rubbish around the parishes as well. That's uh, important. Um, we've seen an increase in recycling um, across the parishes. Um, so all parishes, of course, have had recycling facilities, but you've, uh, up until very recently, had to collect your recyclable items at home, separate them out, and then take them to the car an electric car um, up to the parish hall or the parish depot uh, and get rid of it um, like that. What we now see is that there's only one of the 12 parishes that don't have uh, curbside recycling or aren't shortly going to uh, introduce curbside recycling. So again, it comes back to individual uh, choice and the choices that we make as individuals to recycle to think about a product before we buy it, what's it packaged in? Are we buying the product that's got the least packaging? Uh, or is, is it a product um, that's wrapped in something that we can recycle? It goes back to that point that I um, made earlier about the way our great grandparents lived. They recycled lots and lots of things, and we have to start getting used to uh, doing that. But we have to choose to do it. Uh, government can't force people to do it. It has to be chosen. Um, the, the other point I wanted to make there was that the um, Environment Scrutiny Panel uh, visited a, uh, a plant called JPLAS. That's where we send our plastic bottles to, and that's really quite a good uh, success story. So they take you, because you'll have seen in the news that um, some places in the uh, UK over recent months. They've sent their recycling off to different countries around the globe, uh, and then it's just put into a landfill and it causes pollution there rather than in the UK. Uh, with Jersey's plastic bottles, it goes off to this particular plant and they use that plastic to make other and recycle plastic products. And that's really what real recycling is all about. So that's a, that is a success story uh, that, uh, in one of Jersey's partnerships. Thank you. And our last question comes from Christian in Year 9. Do we control the population of Jersey by controlling immigration in order to keep our island sustainable? You've left the most difficult question till the end, of course. Um, you would all make good politicians. Um, uh, the reality um, is that if, if we're just thinking about uh, global net zero, which is what we should be thinking about, we can't just think about our own uh, island. It's really important that we all take personal responsibility, but this is a global issue. Um, I just heard a speech this morning from uh, the Maldives uh, minister, uh, and she was uh, talking about the net zero work that they are doing in the Maldives um, and transitioning from diesel to solar energy. Uh, and she said they in the Maldives can go 100% 100, 100, uh, renewable and they could do it at the end of the year, but they will still cease to exist as islands if the rest of the world doesn't play its um, part. And so immigration does bring problems for Jersey, which need to be managed better in the future. Uh, I absolutely accept that. 
but I, I, I wouldn't want any of us to think uh, that we can be part of the solution for um, going net zero and uh, keeping global warming targets to within that 1.5% by simply uh, saying that it's uh, it's a problem of immigration because it isn't because people are in existence now wherever they are around the world and we have our responsibility which is not just uh, individual family parochial island wide we are all global citizens as well thank you i think that concludes all the questions for today senator um, I'd just like to thank you on behalf of all the pupils at St Michael's School for giving up your time this morning. I know it must be very, very busy at the, at the conference and that um, your time is very, very precious. But when you return to the islands, perhaps you'd like to come in and see some of the children for yourself and have a look around at the school, at some of the things that we're doing to, sort of, to improve our sustainability as a community, school community. But I'd just like to thank you on behalf of all the children and staff at the school for giving up your time. Thank you very much. What? Well, can I say thank you very much indeed, and if we're honest, of course, uh, it, it's much more valuable if I'm there in person, because you just listening to me spouting off is not as good as me listening to your ideas about how we can th do things differently and be innovative, and for me to learn about what you're doing as individuals and as schools. So I um, uh, value that, and hopefully we'll be able to do that uh, in the not too distant future. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Cheers, Senator. Bye. 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 Bye.